my last video, I gave an overview and an explanation on how to use maths. In this video, I wanna guide you through some patching exercises. So there are tons of great patching videos out there, and I'm actually gonna to link to one of my favorite series of videos on maths from a creator named Sound and Voltage. Those videos really helped me learn when I was just starting out. And I don't wanna just recreate those videos because I think they're already really great. So I've got a bit of a different approach. As I said earlier, many people told me that I should buy maths right away when I was first getting into Eurorack. And I didn't really listen to them. Now that I have a little bit better of an idea of what I'm doing, I've since purchased maths. And I've thought a lot about whether or not I should have purchased it right away or whether or not I was fine just waiting a while. So today, I'm going to take a look at some of the modules that I bought right up front and see if we can replace their functionality with maths. The goal of my first rack was really twofold. One, I wanted to just have a solo synth voice that was nice and simple, but that worked as a solo voice. And two, I was really curious in making random generative sequences. So today I'm gonna to take a look at some of the modules that I originally bought and see if we can replace their functionality with maths. I'm also gonna show you how to set up a random generative sequence that makes use of tons of the functions within maths and show you how I used maths to solve a few issues that I was running into. In the end, with those two exercises, you'll see a lot of what maths can do. At the end of the video, I'll talk a little bit about whether or not I think maths is a great module for buying when you're first getting into your rack and whether or not I should have bought it right away. Down the road, I might make another video with more creative patches for maths because there's definitely a lot of use that you can get out of this creatively. But I just think that there's so much information that I want to cover today that getting into all the different creative uses would just make the video really muddy. But that's okay, because I like making videos and that just gives me an opportunity to make more videos. All right, let's jump in and take a look. So in keeping consistent with the idea of should I bought maths right away when I was starting out with Eurorack? This was my first setup. It's the Tip Top Audio Happy Ending Kit. This is what I bought right at the beginning just because I wanted a cheap, accessible case. I'm also going to be using my Arturia Key Step to sequence everything. And just to have a little fun, I'm going to play around with some cool camera editing tricks. And I've been wanting to try for a while, so I think this is a great opportunity. So let's hook up some basic modules. There, now wasn't that cool? Anyway, so two of the first modules that I bought were the dual ADSR and the quad VCA. Knew I needed an envelope and some sort of VCA. I bought the double ADSR because I thought I would use two at some point. And this is just a basic VCO. My first VCO was Platts, but I think that the Dofer basic VCO is a great VCO to start with if you're just getting into your rack, so that's what I'm gonna use today. So let's hook up this basic synth voice. So on my key step, I've got the pitch coming out of with the red cable and the gate coming out with the yellow cable. I'm gonna put the pitch in the volts per octave. I'm gonna put the gate into the gate of the ADSR. Gate out into the CV of the VCA. And we'll go with the pulse wave in of the VCA. And then out of the VCA into my mixer. And this is what my synth sounds like. So this could easily be done using math. Let me show you how. Man, I really hope that looks as cool as I think it's gonna come out. I can't wait to edit it down. So I'm gonna hook up the same sound, the same everything, but I'm gonna use maths instead of my ADSR. So I'm gonna come out into volts per octave, Then here, I'm gonna start by going into the input of channel one, and we'll go unity out into the CV. And this is what my synth sounds like. And you can control the attack and decay using these two knobs. The difference between the signal input and the trigger input is really the sustain phase. So if I'm playing on a keyboard, 
and I hold down a note, if I'm going through signal input, it'll sustain. And as soon as I release it, the decay stage starts. If I go into trigger, there's no sustain phase. The difference between the unity out and channel one output is simply whether or not you want to use this attenuator. Going into channel one, Going into the unity out, the attenuator doesn't do anything. Let's look at some more examples. So let's go back to our other synth. I'm gonna try a new trick here. And we're right back to our original synth voice with one difference, I've added a quad LFO. So this was also one of the first modules I bought. I bought it because of course I wanted a modulation source. So let's hook our synth voice back up and let's put in some modulation. Let's go out of this LFO and into pulse width. Now, the basic VCO does have an attenuator on it for pulse width, so you can control how much this LFO has an effect. If you turn it up too much, then the signal kind of cancels itself out, and that's what that little clipping is. So if I didn't have this attenuator, then I would also need to buy that. So here is the dual attenuator that I bought when I first started. Let's use that instead of this one to control our modulation. So these two also, I could create the same synth voice using maths. Let's check it out. So here we are again with the same voice with maths, but we're going to add some modulation to the pulse width. I showed you how to make a basic LFO in the last video. We're going to do that again. I'm going to use, since channel one's already being used for our envelope, I'm going to use channel four. So in order to do that, all you have to do is turn the cycle on. We can use our attack and decay knobs to control the LFO. And you can use this LED as a kind of guide as to what's happening with it. And then I'm going to come out of channel four and into my pulse width modulation. Let's make it go really fast. That's pretty cool. Now notice, if I turn it all the way up, it starts to clip, so we can use this attenuator to control it. Now what we could also do is come out of the sum input because since we're plugged, our gate's plugged into channel one here as opposed to unity. So that takes the signal out of the sum. So now it's just the sum of all of channel two, channel three and channel four. And this means that we could get that LFO to go into the negative range as well. It's just something to keep in mind that you can really change what these LFOs sound like. We could even turn up to, to have it be more exponential.
It just gives us a tremendous amount of control. So since we're here, I'm going to show you something that I couldn't do with just the LFOs and the ADSR from before. This input right here turns the cycle on and off. So if I were to come out of, say, the end of cycle and have that turning on and off our envelope gate, you can add some cool effects. It almost creates like a cool ratchet effect. And since the end of cycle is pretty much just that the voltage is high during the attack stage, that's going to control when this is on. If you wanted to have more space in between the bursts of ratchets, then you would make sure to have their fall be a longer time. And likewise, if you wanted them to go in constantly, you would turn it all the way down. It's a really long fall time, so it only comes up occasionally. Let's make it a little bit quicker. And let, now let's make the duration of the ratchets longer. Pretty cool stuff. Let's take a look at another example. One of the things that really interested me about Eurorack was making random sequences. So after I got my first few modules, the next ones that I got were things like random noise and a quantizer, because I wanted to make some just completely random sequences based on sampling noise. So let's hook some of those up. All right, let's make a generative sequence using maths. So I was having the hardest time just figuring out how to get a good randomized sequence using these modules. I thought it would be super easy just get a random, some random voltage, plug it into a quantizer, into the VCO, and I'm good to go. But let me show you the problem that I ran into. I'm gonna use the Mordax data to illustrate it. I thought I could just take the random output, go into the CVN, and then plug that into my volts per octave. Let's set up the same envelope we had before. So the biggest issue here is that you need a clock. That's easy enough to solve. I could have used my key step or another sequencer or maybe another clock module, but let's use maths. So I can turn on my LFO and use my end of cycle to trigger the envelope. Not quite working out the way I wanted. There's some cool sound effects, but it's really just all over the place. There's that weird squeaking sound, and that's because if you look at the random voltage, it's not stepped at all. And even if we come out of the quantizer, it's still not stepped. So if we look at the random voltage, that indicator is zero. So right now you can even tell that there's the random voltage goes positive and negative. And if we're talking about volts per octave, I need all of that to be positive. Also to get it stepped, I'm gonna need to put in a trigger into my quantizer. So let's plug this back into the CV and I'm gonna malt this using a stackable cable. So now I can split the clock in a couple different directions. Let's send one to the quantizer. And now you notice that it plateaus, so there are steps, but we still have a problem because notice how it's bottoming out. Let's listen to what that sounds like. So I'm gonna take 
continue this chain into the volts per octave. So there are a couple of different issues. Number one, every time it bottoms out, every time this voltage goes negative, I hear the same note. So it just repeats that note. The second issue is that right now, this is set to a scale of five volts. So that means that every single one of these boxes is five volts. And if we're talking about volts per octave, that's five octaves, that's just huge. So I've got to do a couple of things. Number one, I've got to offset the voltage so that all of it's in the positive range or at least most of it. The next thing I gotta do is squash it and attenuate it so that way everything stays within whatever range I want. I'm gonna aim for like one volt, maybe two volts, so that way the, all the notes stay within one or two octaves. And that's what I'm gonna use maths for. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna have to do is send this in here. Okay, so this is a little bit confusing, but I'm coming out of the CV and into channel three of maths. That's going back into the Mordax data just so we can visualize it. And then this is coming out into volts per octave. So because we're in number three, that's gonna be used to control how many octaves it goes through. Channel two is gonna control the offset of whether or not it's all positive or negative or where in that range we want. So the first thing I'm gonna do is change this scale from five volts to one volt. Now another interesting thing, because I'm coming out of the sum input, known as channel four impacts that. So if I plug in a dead patch, and we're gonna use it to modulate something anyway, that takes it out of the equation. So now we're only talking about channel two and three coming out of the sum. So we're at one volt per octave. So each of the squares is one volt. So let's raise it up into the positive range. I changed my mind. I'm gonna attenuate and control the voltage before I put it in the quantizer. So now I'm going random voltage to channel three, coming out of the sum of maths and into the quantizer and having the quantizer go into the Mordax. Let's apply the offset. So now we're in the positive range and then you don't have to do it much. But there we go. So now it looks like our steps are staying within two boxes. So I'm going to lower it down because I want it to stay kind of near neutral voltage. And that looks good. Let's plug our clock back into the trigger and we should hear our sequence. I'm going to plug this back into the modulation source. how you can make a generative sequence using maths. And if you really think about it, we used maths in this one patch. We used it for an envelope. We used it for a clock. We used it for an LFO to modulate something. We used it as an offset. We also used it as an attenuator. So that's one, two, three, four, 
five functions that we used coming out of maths to do this. That would have meant that if I didn't have maths, I would have needed five other modules just to get this simple patch. So should I have bought maths in the beginning? Eh, maybe. For me, the Mordax data is what really helped make the maths click. And I don't know if I would have been able to afford buying that along with maths right up front. I also think that I probably would have had a lot of frustration had I just bought maths without the Mordax data. Buying the simple Dofer products right at the beginning, I think for me was really helpful in just figuring out how modular worked together and the basics of modular synthesis. So even though I have maths now, I'm still gonna make good use out of those Dofer modules. So it's not like it's wasted money. In the end, I guess I'd say that I think holding off on maths if you're a beginner is okay. There got to a point where I could identify a problem and then think about how I'm gonna solve that problem. What I was talking about with the generative sequence is a good example of that. Once I got to that point, I think that's when maths really made sense for it to be in my rack. Before that, it could have just been sort of confusing and trial and error kind of stuff. But if you're jumping into your rack with a problem solving mindset and enjoy puzzles and finding creative ways of getting from point A to point B, maths could be for you. In the end, honestly, I don't think there's a right or wrong answer. You got to just jump in. So I hope you enjoyed this video and that you got something out of it. Let me know what you think in the comments section. I'm going to be posting more videos on patching with maths and other modules. So make sure you subscribe and I'll see you next time.